Just to, to give this some context, the year Queer as Folk aired, just 27% of Britons thought sexual relationships between, between two adults of the same sex was not wrong, according to British Social Attitude Survey. Thanks for that. Uh, nearly half the population thought it was always or mostly uh, wrong. So, um, Courtney and Owen, what, what, 1999, what were you guys doing? Um, I was living in Brisbane with my family. I was 17, and I remember, I think my story is like many teens uh, watching Queer as Folk. Mum and Dad were upstairs. My bedroom was downstairs. I didn't have a remote control yet. They hadn't been invented, at least not in Brisbane, Australia. Um, and I just remember standing by the television with my finger on the channel change, sort of watching the stairs, watching the television, watching the stairs, watching the television. <laughs> With a hard on, um, so <laughs> that's that's wow. Watching the television, watching the hard on, watching the yeah. stairs, watching the hard on. Watching the... <laughs> one hand on the television. I won't tell you where the other one was. No. Um, but uh, yeah, I just remember being amazed and 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 in awe of what I saw on the television because mm. I'd never witnessed anything like that. I mean, I think we had dial-up internet and bulletin board services with the. I mean that. You know, the in episode one. Yes, the way it's yes loading slowly. the porn yeah. like that. Yes. That's what it was like. So you know, queer as folk was a much quicker, uh, much quicker outcome. Root. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. quicker root. Really <laughs> your starting. What's your engagement nice with the show? Why me? Well, I mean, firstly, what a panel of queer deities. I'm doing it. I'm really doing it. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was. I was. I mean, I grew up six miles away from Canal Street, and culturally, it just felt like a different yeah. universe. I mean. Uh, you know, I mean, it was like coming up for air, Queer as Folk. I was a 14-year-old boy, very closeted, didn't come out for another six years. And um, it was the same story. Every teenage boy, if they were about 13, 14, 15, had that kind of... I remember we had this uh, second TV in another room, which was from the 1970s, and you're worried, you know, if you turn it on, would it just explode? And it took ages to warm up. And you'd hide, you'd turn the volume down. Um, but what was so fascinating about it was that because I remember the oppressive level of homophobia that I grew up in, in the community I grew up in. I grew up near the centre of Stockport. You know, and bear in mind, this was only a decade after the chief constable of Greater Manchester Police said that HIV victims were swirling around in a human cesspool of their own making. Uh, we had Section 28 in place, which yeah. was only introduced a decade earlier. The first homophobic bit of legislation introduced for generations, which forbid the so-called promotion of homosexuality. Uh, and so schools in practice didn't have LGBT education. Yeah. The only time we heard about it in class was when the head teacher said how bad anal, anal sex was for you. Um, and out of we, nowhere. I just threw it in. <laughs> just... We do maths at the time. It was a I geography mean... lesson. <laughs> 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 Straight um, from Oxbow Lakes to anal sex. <laughs> and, um, There's no room at the inn. No. <laughs> yeah, and um, the, the anti-gay laws were all in place. You know, yeah. There was no equal partnership, let alone equal marriage. Yeah. You could be discriminated against. And it, the intensity of that homophobia, you know, every, I indulged in it, you know, like a lot of gay guys. Uh, you know, because anyone who deviated from what it was to be a man had to, you know, you, 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 the, calling people gay, whether if they weren't sporty enough, didn't get into enough fights, it was just so rampant and suffocating. And this was like, you know, if you see homophobia, I see it as like an authoritarian regime with these unspoken rules that's enforced through abuse and intimidation and even violence. And this was like being in a prison cell and this note being slipped in, you know, that, and, and that, you know, that there was freedom, there was potential freedom. And the feeling that you're not alone as well, and that's what great television does, is it, you, you see a representation of yourself, your community, your friends, your outlook, and that had been what was so missing from the yeah, it's LGBTQ lonely, plus it? landscape. Yeah. It's so lonely when you're, you're not out to a single person on it, you're, you're struggling to come out to yourself. And, and to see these people living their lives and being happy. And, you know, and it, 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 you know, when you think at that time, you think, oh God, this future has been snatched away. I won't have wife and kids and all the things I'm told and I'll be miserable for the rest of my life. It transformed, I think, for a lot of people who were very miserable, a lot of young LGBTQ people. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, properly thank you. <laughs> And as you say, um, 1999, Section 28 still in place, repealed in Scotland in 2000, being more enlightened folk, and 2003 uh, in England, I, I believe. You presumably knew that the show was going to get a lot of press and a lot of heat. Were you surprised how quickly the negativity faded? Well, I think we have a different reaction to it because you were more aware of what was going to happen. 
Mm. I kind of just went for the story. So for me, this yeah. was a fantastic story about unrequited love, about friendship, about people at a certain age. It was relevant and it was valid because it was a great story. And I, I presumed people would look at it for its own worth, whereas you were aware that people came with an agenda very early on. also kind of thought, when we were, when we were out on Canal Street shooting it, there was also a slight assumption it would kind of disappear. You know, because Channel 4 was showing, like, Derek John late and films late at night. We went out at 10... They shifted it from 10 o'clock till 10.30, and that's when we thought we were doomed. Yeah. We kind of went, oh, well, no-one's going to watch that then. They promised us 10 o'clock, saw the sex scenes, and I can't criticise them because they backed us completely with the show, but they slightly chickened out and said, let's make this 10.30. Um, so there was also an assumption it was going to be the, the equivalent Small. of a Channel 4 documentary about the defenestration of Prague. It's <laughs> like, it's, 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 it wasn't going to work. Erotic so, in its own in way. Its Come way. On. What a window that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, so although it hit a lot of fuss and it hit a lot of nonsense, it was also delightful because actually you would make things to be seen. And actually, if there is a bit of a fuss, hooray, that's a great fuss to have. So it was also just Joyous. You can talk about the problems of it a lot, but we don't talk about the joy of it enough. It was lovely. And, and from that first press launch, we had people sat on the stairs, and that yeah. was when we were kind of went, oh, people are really taking notice. Yes, you had to like 200 journalists when you normally... Was but the press team. launch was extraordinary. It was a room like this with 200 people, 199 of them <laughs> against it. With the most hostile questioning, <laughs> and largely the gay press as well. So, and, the gay, and there's a reason behind the arguments. I'm not having a go at people, but the gay press was largely going, why haven't you mentioned HIV? Why doesn't he say he's had safe sex? Like, hello, I've just had safe sex with Nathan. <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, he does, that is safe sex. He just doesn't say it. It's obviously safe sex. But they were, you know, there's a big agenda behind that. It was yes. ferocious anger at that. One person in the auditorium put his hand up and said, I like this, and that was Boyd Hilton from Heat magazine. Who is, who, is he here? Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> We'll never and forget, did a that? A wonderful right. champion, I have genuine. to say. And also, not just, but he genuinely, that, that Heat magazine was brand new, like that week, yeah. practically, and that was a young audience and a, and a young readership and a trendy readership, and that was genuinely like a ray of hope, like, oh, there is an audience. How did the, the show... I mean, when you think of that show and how, how electrifying it was for, for the UK audiences, how on earth did, did the US show come about? I mean, we, we customarily believe that the US is more traditional, more conservative. How, how did Basically, that generate? Basically, we were ripped off like fuck and they paid us tuppence. But there we go. Is that the story we can tell? Can we do that one? How honest are we today? It was before no. we owned our own rights. Yeah. So Channel 4 owned the rights. before Independence owned rights. So Channel 4 owned the rights. There's Channel still 4... pain here, I'm sensitive. Yeah. There's still lots well, of pain. I can bear a grudge for 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Channel 4 sold the rights to uh, American producers, who then did talk to you. We were delighted yeah. it happened. Yeah. It, it's like it ran and for it's five a very years different show. Yes, yeah. yeah, so actually it had a, a longer um, yeah. sort of journey in the States. Oh. And, and what was the, the difference? Did they water down the sexual content? Oh, no. they... I would say... No, there's tons of that. They couldn't... They literally couldn't make Nathan 15. He had to be 17. They just went legally. We can't... Uh, I don't know why that matters legally. People get shot in dramas. That's not legal. But um, <laughs> it's, I got okay, a in prison. But it, it, it's like they just... I'm still furious about that. Yeah, so, um, they, they just couldn't, and they were very honest about that from the start. And, yeah. uh, but then they were very faithful. They were very lovely to us, actually, about it. 